presence would be with you and I've given you the assignment, it is God's assignment, you're just an overseer or you're just an instrument that God's going to use. Don't think so highly of yourself. It's not about you, it's about God. Greenhouse International Church, Facebook friends, IG partners, the community at large, everyone who follows the ministry of the Greenhouse International Church this month, July, we don't know how long this will be extended, but for July 2020, we're going to pull it back online. Meet us every Sunday morning, 1030 in the month of July, Facebook Live, and other social media platforms. This month's sermon series is entitled Freedom Non-Negotiable. And we're going to be covered. I got to warn you, it's rated R. It's going to be real, it's going to be relevant, and it will not be a churchy type of message. It will be a message that God has given previous liberators like Moses and Joshua, Dr. King, to set the people free with truth, even at the risk of being ridiculed. You don't want to miss a Sunday in July. Freedom, not negotiable. Share with your friends and family, and also remember, the truth shall set you free. If it's finances, if it's a church, if it's a job, if it's a situation in your life right now that has you in bondage, that has you in captivity, that has you in beneath your call a bank position in life, that has you operating outside of your full potential, it's not of God, so it's not of freedom, and we're going to cut it loose. And they will even call me ungodly. Come on, sir. But those who want to be set free will know the word of God shall set me free. Come on. Not the word that's been handed down, the water down, and we can 5013 C keeping word. Come on, sir. The word that told me to pick up and trust me. The word that's not afraid of others getting mad. Come on. So let's jump right in. Two thousand. It's 11 10. I'm going to spend the next few minutes just walking through it. And if I got to stop, we'll pick back up Tuesday and next Sunday. And every, this message will not end. It will just keep going on Sunday after Sunday. It will be like your favorite series. You got to catch it back up the next episode. Turn with me to the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 17. Let me build the case. Let me build the case. 2 Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 17. There will be more teaching and declaration than a bunch of noisy preaching. But I promise you at some point in time, you will get some noisy preaching to, to encourage you through it all. But I got to make sure you're set free. My teacher taught me in simplistic form, two plus two was four. So when I went to the store, they couldn't cheat me out of my money. 
So I can't teach you out of your glory. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, Now the Lord is spirit. And what the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Hold that, go jump down, or go back to Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Now, if the Lord is spirit, and whatever the Lord is, there is freedom. Get this. If the Lord is freedom, and whatever he is, there's freedom, and the Lord is a spirit. Catch this. Genesis 2 and 7, the Amplified Bible says, The Lord God formed that is created the body of man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being, another speaking spirit, an individual complete in body and spirit. So catch this, God is spirit. And God created man in his image. Therefore, man is a spirit. Just like God, man's another speaking spirit because God created us in his image. Now, now watch this. Our bodies, our bodies, this outside, this stuff we see in the physical realm, our bodies be, are nothing but houses that contain our spirits. Watch, watch this. My body is nothing but a house God designed to contain my spirit. Spirit. Some houses are black, some houses are white. Matter of fact, God is so creative, he made a multitude of different color houses in many different sizes and styles. But the house was never designed to control your spirit, only to contain your spirit. But the devil has pulled a slick trick on us, having us focus, Brandon, more on our temporary containers than our earthly, eternal soul or spirit. So we're now fighting against the house because we don't understand the spirit realm. We're fighting against racial battles. We've lost the spirit realm. We are trying to tear down the houses, not realizing it's the spirit that should be dictating and controlling the maneuver of a man. I don't care what laws we pass, I don't care how many statues we turn down, I don't care how many flags we burn, until the spirit of a man is back in alignment with God, we will have problems in America. It's not the outside house that controls us, it should be the internal spirit that was meant eternal, even in heaven or hell, with God or sin. Which one will you allow to control you? Jump down to John 8, verse 31 and 32. There's a dispute over whose children are opponents of Jesus. People were battling over who's right, who's wrong. Who's singing the right kind of songs? Who's preaching the right kind of sermons? Who, 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 who's for the black and who's for the right? Who, who, it's just the truth is, it should be about who's for the truth and who's for the wrong. And look how Jesus responds when they're battling over who's on the right side of history. Who, who, who's the right ones, who's the wrong ones, who's really believing and following the Christ. So Jesus responds to we have these, it's amazing, we have these same conversations in 2020. We have these same things, what church is right, what church is wrong, what denomination is right, what denomination is wrong, who, who's right, who's with us, who's against us. It should be not a battle against the house, but the spirit. Who's living in truth and who's living in the lie? Because Jesus responds to them with this. Jesus says in John 8 and 31 and 32, to the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. So there's a contradiction. That's what it means if you're not holding to the teachers, you're not really a disciple. You're just an actor or an actress. Wow. You're just somebody trying to build your own personal platform using my playbook. But if you hold to my teaching, then you are really, the word really means that you own it, you're 100%, you're in it. You are really my disciple. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. It's time we run back to the truth of God's word, because that's where we discover our true freedom and gain the ability to operate our full potential. The devil is having a ball right now, watching us attack one another house. Personalities, people fighting people instead of everybody coming together realizing it's a battle about the truth and the lie. Which side will you fall on? 
The Bible says in Luke, I'm going to overload you with scripture because it's not about me, it's about the word of God. The Bible says in Luke 4 and 18, I'm just building a case. Luke 4 and 18, it says Jesus gave it his mission statement, his vision statement. The reason why he came here to do what he came to do. The Spirit of the Lord is on me. This is Jesus talking. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim or preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind to set the oppressed free. Either you are a member of the oppressed group or you are a member of the oppressed evil. This is one of Jesus' first sermons where he declares his purpose and mission. He includes it by saying he come to set the captives, the oppressed free. And I have not found anywhere in scripture in the Bible Jesus changed his mission or his vision. So I am publicly and boldly declaring this ministry which we call the Greenhouse International Church at 200 West Greens Road in the heart of Greens Point community, our vision and our mission will be to teach God's word with such boldness where we will assist God's people out of poverty, out of captivity, and out of oppression, and we will get in the oppressor's face with the truth of God's word, willing to put everything on the line to get God people back in line, so I come to announce to the oppressor, your time is running out. The truth is getting ready to liberate God's people and set God's people free and you had every chance to shut me up but you kept letting me get up and keep breathing. Now I have the boldness to know that you can't stop what God has put in motion and if you do stop me the personality, you can't stop the truth of God's word from going free. So every time I open my mouth from this point forward, I'm going to say what thus says the Lord in such a fashion, the oppressed will have the boldness of God word to never get negotiate their freedom but put their knee on the oppressor. Right. Speak, sir. All you gotta do is state the facts. Come on, state the facts. Jesus. Oh, my God, this morning. <laughs> Let's look back to the Old Testament and Moses Come on, state the facts. and the journey of God's people. Now, I don't know how I'm going to get all this out in such a short period of time, but I promise you, everything I tell you is in the book of God. It's, it's in the Bible, but I'm going to give you a homework assignment because I want you to go and discover it for yourself. And I want you to do this. I want you to do what's called a fact check. Anything that I say to you throughout the month of July that you do not accurately find state in the word of God as God said it, I want you to fact check me and say, he's nothing but a big fat lie. Well, I'm not really fat, but you know I'm just that's big speech. Well, he's not but a skinny liar. I can't be a liar by saying that I was fat. Brandon, we can't do that. Yeah. Uh -huh. So let's get this Old Testament story of Moses and just just follow along with me because I'm gonna give you bits and pieces. Help us, God. Help us this morning. Before Moses was born, the children of Israel were living in slavery in Egypt. Pharaoh was afraid the numbers of the people of, in slavery was growing. He was intimidated by the people he was oppressing. So he had them put under extreme bondage and slavery so he could control them and they would not rebel against him. Freedom truth number one, write this down. The oppressor is afraid of the oppressed. Because they know that the oppressed to the spirit of God, yeah. the battle is over. That's why the oppressor is trying so hard to keep you in bondage and captivity. Because if you ever tap into this thing called the spirit of God, the oppressor know the battle is over and we win. Yes, we do. My God! He got so bad at one point that Pharaoh put an order out, a rock, he passed a rock, a decree that all male children will be killed. Yes. He would not be able to control the male man. Oh, you missed that, you missed that. That's why you see uh, the violent attack in the hood against the male man because the oppressor knows if the black male man would ever come together on one accord, 
No oppressor could hold any hood down. The oppressor knows that if the male man, the black male man, the male man of color would ever come together on one accord and stop bowing down to the world system and tap into that thing that's yeah. good. Remember when he created it? Inside of us, making another speaking spirit in his English, and God is victorious, God is mighty, God is strong, God never abandons his people. And if the black male man would ever get back in position with the living the male in this community, they will run the oppressor out of business. Oh, hey. So I attack the family of color and make the battle between the man and the woman. So you won't have the strength of unity to yeah. overcome me. Come on, you just freed somebody's marriage right there. Come on. This battle not between See, it was doing this time when this law and decree was passed that Moses was born. Remember, all this stuff was going on before Moses was even here. And most of the stuff we are experiencing now did not happen in our lifespan. It happened before we got here, but we still responsible for how the outcome comes. So when, 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 when the oppressors of slavery, children say, well, I never had a slave, but unfortunately you gotta pay for what your oppressive mama and daddies and mamas and daddies and mamas and dad, you gotta pay for the cries of your grandparents. And until you pay for the cries of your great grandparents, God gonna hold you accountable for me and my grandkids. I just lost some things. Tight, but it's right. It's tight, but it's right. See, Moses' mother was a Hebrew. And if you, if you track down the history now, in Hebrew, if you go back, keep going, keep going through time, Hebrew is synonymous now to people of color in America. So if you track down the Hebrew, it was another name for Israelite again. The Israelite story, the Hebrew-like story is comparable to the story of the African-American in America. So when Moses was born, his mother hid him for three months, watch this, so he would not be found and killed by Pharaoh. They didn't just start killing black boys. Well, give us a history lesson. They've been killing black boys. And they're not killing black boys because they don't like black boys. They're killing black boys because they're afraid of that black boy who with black men upon them. You gotta give us a history lesson then. That's why there's a prison to school to prison pipeline because the more these boys get educated the right way, the more they will have a voice to declare right from wrong, truth from the lie. Listen, listen, listen. I understand what you're saying. Stop those children. Stop those millennials. Stop those kids from doing all that bad stuff. Well, if you want to stop doing bad stuff, you better start doing the right stuff. Fact. Fact. Freedom truth number two. Freedom truth number two. When George Floyd was crying out for his mother, he was reaching back to the spirit of his mother because like Moses, George knew the power of a praying, protected mother. And if anybody could save him, it would be his mother. So when George was crying for his mama, he was crying with the spirit of Moses. And all those that came before him, well, if I had a praying grandmother, if I had a praying mother, if anything could save me out of this destruction that I'm going through, if anything can save me right now, it's the prayers of my mama and my grandmother. So when George cried out, mama, he was crying to a spirit that resides inside of all of us. So it just so happens that the Moses mother hid him. She finally the minute released him in the ark. In the ark. Along the river. That just so happened, Pharaoh's daughter shows up and so-called rescues Moses. She thought. Watch this. Freedom truth number three. Divine timing meets divine assignment. Wow. It wasn't no coincidence that Pharaoh's daughter shows up at the exact same place Moses' mama sets him free in the ark. Remember the ark represents a place where God will preserve his people until everything is safe again. 
Noah and his family was on an ark. So when the storm broke out, the storm could not kill them because God had divine assignment on Noah's life. Now, Moses in an ark because God will protect him for his divine assignment. So you thought God had you in isolation. No, God had you in a saving place until your divine assignment could reach your divine timing so you wouldn't drown. But if you got out there too soon on the platform, if God bless you too greatly too soon, you would drown and start saying stupid stuff like look at me. Come on, right. sir. The house that I built, the ministry that I built, the people that I saved, go sit down somewhere. <laughs> divine time and use divine assignment. <laughs> It's no coincidence that COVID-19 plus I can't breathe create the perfect storm. Yes, sir. Oh, my God. You say, well, why, why now? Because God had a, had a perfect situation where everybody was tired of being in the house. So when they came outside now, they weren't just outside to drop it like it's hot. They were outside now to make it hot. Whoa. Facts. Moses was thus raised up in Pharaoh's house. That's why I thank God for the education he allowed me to have. When Moses became full grown, he became very distressed, though, and said his own people suffer under the hands of the Egyptians. During one of those times, he saw the Egyptian beat one of his fellow Egyptian Hebrew brothers. Moses became so furious at seeing this injustice. He killed the Egyptian who had been beating up his fellow brother. I'm just reading the Bible, just giving you the story of Moses. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not telling anybody to go out and kill anybody. Don't get this twisted. I'm not, I'm not telling anybody to go out and cre create violence. I am the man of the No More Bloodshed movement. I'm not telling anybody to create violence. I'm telling you, don't stay silent. No more BS. No more being silent. No more being stuck. So Moses, after he kills the Egyptian man, Pharaoh finds out that so Moses has to go on the run for 40 years in the desert. Another opportunity for God to get Moses Often one, the often one in American history, in, in the sport of baseball, why was Jackie Robinson the first African American to play in Major League Baseball? He was not the most gifted in Negro League. He was not the most talented in Negro League, yet he was chosen to be the first. And I discovered that after much research, and really he was discovered not because he was the most talented, but he was the most balanced. He, he, he knew how to handle pressure, under pressure. See, if he would have been somebody like Satchel Page, if he would have been somebody like some of the other famous Negro League players who had anger problems, they would have lashed out. They would have became a personality battle and not a movement. So God always chooses somebody that can handle pressure under pressure so the glory would go to God. I was watching a documentary just last night and I kept telling my granddaughter, come here and watch it with Papa. But she was so busy with her grandmother doing female stuff, makeup and stuff. I'm trying to say the word, they try to get their face right. Okay, 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 okay. So, so now, so, so now, when I'm watching this documentary, I see this young girl, the first African American female to go to a segregated school, and she had to get on the bus by herself, walk in the classroom by herself, while she's been spat upon, while she's been talked about, while she's been threatened of her very life, and she just keep walking. She just keep walking. She don't stop and cuss back. She don't stop. She knew the big picture. If I get my education, I will be able to set my people free. But if I fight back, the movement will stop and come to an end. I can't beat the oppressor on the outside. I gotta beat the oppressor what's on the inside of me. But you're gonna somebody gonna get this right now. See, you are acting out at the house and personality of the oppressor, but tap into the spirit of God inside of you and watch how God will use you to liberate yourself and others of what you would have done if you were here doing the civil rights movement. Because I know the answer. You'll be doing exactly what you're doing right now in this battle against injustice. If you're doing nothing, you'll be doing nothing back in slavery. If you're doing nothing now, you'll be doing nothing during the time of the civil rights movement. So whatever you're doing right now is exactly what you would have been doing then. Either you'll be putting your life on the line for the freedom of all, or you'll be sitting around watching and complaining. Wow. Wow. Watching and complaining. God calls Moses out to deliver his people. I told you for 40 years, where was Moses at now? In the desert. Being made ready. You don't want to wait four days to be made ready. 
So you about to lose your Holy Ghost mind because you've been in the house for almost four months, not being able to go to all the places you want to go when the place you've been going be keeping you in bondage in the first place. You've been driving yourself to a house of slavery. You've been visiting people who keep you in bondage. You drive in there all happy and cheerful, and as soon as you walk in their crib, you get sad. That's bondage. That's not love. Right. You choose and you bad. use your own gas to get trapped. Drove through traffic. Paid a beltway fee to get there. Knowing when you get there, you're going to get depressed, abused, and unused. That's slavery. That's bondage. That's captivity. And Jesus said, I have come to set you free. Pray a blessing to somebody. So, so God has dealt with Moses for 40 years in this wilderness. And then God tells Moses, I've heard the cries of your people. The Bible says that God acknowledges the cries and plight of the Egyptian rule and decides he will deliver them out of their bondage because of the previous covenant he had made with their forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, watch this. I'm just telling you the storyline of Moses and the children of Israel, which is parallel to the storyline of African Americans in America. God first makes contact with Moses through a burning bush. Go to Sunday school and get the lesson. The bush was burning, but the bush was not consumed. The flame of fire, but it would not consume the bush. This bush is burning with fire, but the bush itself is not being consumed by the fire. God is trying to get the attention of Moses, so Moses to get the attention of the people. God is doing something. And the reason God had you in the house for me, he was trying to get your attention so he can use you to do something. But instead, you've been learning new games and tricks to be advice in your own house. Facts. New game. God then starts to speak directly to Moses. He tells Moses he has heard the cries of his people. And he is calling Moses out to be the one who would go there and deliver them from their plight with the Egyptians. God is going to deliver the Israelites from the Egyptians through Moses. It's in your Bible, get this, watch this. I'm about to set somebody free. Freedom, troops number five. It's in the word, sir. Freedom, troops number five. We declared going to the year of 2020, it will be the year of perfect vision. Anybody remember all those prophetic messages in December of 2020 going to be the year of perfect vision. Fact. January people are stating this is the year 2020 of perfect vision. But this is the truth, Dre. We were too busy to see the hands and hear the voice of God. So God to shut us down for a minute so we can get our attention because the bush been burning. We just didn't see the fire. Okay. Right. That's good. That's good. Okay. It's been we were so busy trying to build our own name. We were so busy trying to get famous. We were so busy trying to get the right place. We were so busy like the right bump in our phone. We were so busy being busy. We couldn't see the hand of God and hear the voice of God. So God said, let me shut them down. They can see the bush is burning, but the bush is not on fire. See, the bush is on fire, but the bush is not burning. God was out in control. But you're so busy trying to be in control, you don't see who's really in control. Come on, sir. Let me revive. Let me revive, man. When you are so busy trying to be in control, you miss the big picture of who's really in control. And you put yourself in bondage. You in self-quarantine. <laughs> Say it! <laughs> you self-quarantined yourself. I'm going to shout my hand, we don't treat my fire, okay? But then God proceeds to tell Moses that he will be the one to deliver and lead them out of their captivity. And that he will then lead them into it. Watch this. A good and large land to a land flowing with milk and honey to the place of the Canaanites and Hittites. I'm going to give you what your enemies thought was theirs. And I'm going to use you, Moses, to get your people there. Freedom Tree number six is going to blow your mind. Want me bold? At least in my mind, I've never been. Or nobody ever declare what I'm about to declare. I've been in church all my life. And if you can find me a video of someone saying what I'm about to say, send it to me. And I'll pay you for it. 
Because you just fact check me. Watch this. Vision truth number six. Since then you're going to read it like this. All right. Moses ends with an S instead of an E. Watch this. Moses ends with an S instead of an E. It could just be spelled M O S E, and that's still correct, right? But it ends with an S because whenever you add an S to something, you change it from one to plural, which means many. So there is not just one Moses set to set the people free. But God has said to all believers, you can do all things through Christ, which strengthens you. So every believer is that generation, Moses. Therefore, the journey of Moses is the journey of every believer. So get off your butt and pray for somebody to set you free. Trust God for the next. Come on, sir. For the next. 
And so God, Father, tells Moses to tell the people that he is God. He is the God of their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and that he is going to deliver his people and bring them to a promised land flowing with milk and honey. God reinforces the fact I am with you, and I'm going to liberate you. I'm going to free you. I'm going to take you to a place that they brought you to, and I'm going to give that place to you. God said, don't panic. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't stop. Don't let them make you so fearful that you lose your faithfulness. You better prophesy to somebody today, sir. God God gives Moses and we're all Moses. Remember the movie Michael Max a few years ago at the end of the movie they had people of all different races and colors and nationalities and they were standing and said, I am Malcolm X. Well, I want you to do this. I am Moses of my generation and situation. Come on, say it like you really mean. I am Moses of my generation and situation. I have been assigned to set myself free and those I'm going to do free. Freedom truth number eight. God tells Moses to approach Pharaoh. He had pulled his people together for this deliverance. Let me go back to the text first. Forget the God tells Moses, go to Pharaoh. Before you go to Pharaoh, go to the people. Get them all together on one accord. And tell the people in three days, we're going to be in the promised land. You missed that. God tells Moses, go to the people first. Tell them, God's getting ready to take us out of this situation. And in three days, let's say three, in three days, we'll be in the promised land. Three days. And then go to Pharaoh and tell them we can make a bust a move. Three. So, so freedom truth to make. Get, get this, get this. Before they can proceed and go forward, they must be on one accord. Oh, you missed that. You missed that. God said, before you go to Pharaoh, come together. Before you go to Pharaoh, come together. And be on one accord. Now, don't you notice something, how quickly God says he will get us to the promised land, to our destiny. He said, you know, three days. Three days. So now I know you're asking the question now, what happened? Because you know it didn't take three days because we're still in this struggle. So what happened? Did God lie to Moses? And is God lying to us? No, the people were not ready to walk in unity. Come on, sir. So how can we go to the White House if we ain't got the Black House right? Come on! Mm -hmm. uh, I see the hate mail coming now. I see it coming. Now well, we can't expect to go and impact their house until we have our house on one accord. We're still tripping up on who the head Negro. Jesus. Wow! And the results keep coming back zero. Come on now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And watch this, watch this. And the oppressor will always use the vision of the oppressed to keep them in bondage. Ooh, you said something, sir. That's why we can't make progress as a people. We're too busy fighting against each other as a people. Yeah. Mm. But if we ever get ourselves together, the oppressor knows his time has expired. So he keeps putting the vision Field Negro versus house Negro, light skinned versus dark skinned, educated versus uneducated, hood versus suburbs, good hair versus bad hair. All this foolishness that you only see in our culture, you don't see any other culture battling over who the light is. My God. Help us, Father. <laughs> Help us, Father. Help us, Father. Watch this. No one else bound. During their lifetime, all freedom fighters face opposition from the very people they were assigned to set free. Mm. Hear me now. When you take the oath to be the Moses of your generation and situation, don't expect for a parade to be thrown in your arms after you die. It's called hard truth. Dr. King was hated by many black preachers and black people during his lifetime. This universal love only happened after he was murdered. That's big facts. As many black churches you see in Houston 
Only one or two allowed another king to come into their church. Mm. Big fags. Wow, fat fags. Now we everywhere. We, we got posters of him on our walls. But we wouldn't let him through our doors. Yeah, we wouldn't let him do a word. Come on. When he's alive, we wouldn't walk with him. Now he's dead, we'll put his face on a t-shirt and walk. Come on, fat fags. <laughs> <laughs> my time is running out, but I gotta close this. God didn't tell Moses that Pharaoh would get this history being relived. God then tells Moses that Pharaoh is not going to let them go on their first request. He then tells Moses to tell Pharaoh that if he does not let his people go, that he will stretch out his hand and strike Egypt with all of his wonders. It's God talking. Freedom truth number nine. You may not like it, but God is dealing with America right now. Because America has refused to set God's people free. And it's a two-way street. And God's people have not turned from their wicked ways and prayed Satan's camp down because that's when God promised to heal the land. God says, when my people, if my people to call by my name, will humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways, then pray, then I will heal their land. The reason the land is not being healed is because the people of God are not turning back to God and the people that are oppressing the people of God have not set them free. So we're now living in double bondage. We're now fighting two battles on one front the people ain't right and the oppressor ain't right so God has said until y'all get right I'm going to stretch out my wonders and this time it will not be about prosperity this time it will not be about houses you did not feel this time it will be about the nature of sin that keeps you in bondage sin locks you up and locks you down Church folks who get mad, the church folks who get mad at me, you were doing something else doing BTU. Come Second on, school. Sir. What you was doing? Because when I read the story of Jonah, the Bible says God sent the storm. When Jonah was disobedient, God sent the storm, and everybody on the boat with Jonah was affected by Jonah's disobedience. So America, we're going through a COVID-19 storm. America, we're going through a racial storm. America, we're going through a financial storm. America, we're going through a storm because the Jonas in our life are disobedient, and the whole boat, the whole country is rocking from side. And the Bible does not say the devil sent the storm. The Bible says the Lord sent the storm. In 2020, God is dealing with a America. My God! America! America! America is still. Come on, God is dealing with us. Come on, man of God. Not so united. Come on! And yesterday, it felt so weird celebrating the 4th of July. You lie, come on, sir. You lie. Because when you said liberty and justice for all people, what people? You said that my people were picking cotton. Come on. And my women were being robbed and raped. You said it when your own women couldn't even vote. So when you said liberty and freedom for all, you really meant for all of us in this. Hey, 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 so to you, we write that story. God is writing a new story, and the bone of America is gonna keep rocking from side to side. There you go. Good. There you go. Yes. What time is it? I'm writing to my opening text. So keep talking to America. I'm writing at my opening text. Keep talking Grab to America. Grab with me to the book of Exodus, chapter 5, verse 2. I finally got to my opening text. I don't know the introduction. <laughs> Exodus, chapter 5, verse 2. Thank y'all for showing up. And the choir got to sing it real fast. Man. Good. <laughs> I don't need all this time. But I'm almost. Exodus, chapter 5, verse 2. Pharaoh said... Now Moses is going to Pharaoh now. Pharaoh says to Moses, who is the Lord that I should obey him and let Israel go? I don't know this Lord. And I would not let Israel go. This dude so bold, he said, I don't know no God. I am God. 
I call the shots. Letting y'all go. You jumped out of verse 22. God probably deliverance. Moses returns to the Lord and says, Why, Lord? Why have you brought trouble on these people? Is this why you sent me? Ever since I went to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has brought trouble on these people, and you have not rescued your people at all. Come on, let's be real. You've been asking this question. God, why you haven't moved? God, if you're so good, why are black people doing so bad? Come on, don't, don't, don't be so spirit. You, you won't admit out loud if you ask these questions. God, where you at? Yes, sir. They're killing us on video. And God, where are you? People are now getting lynched again. God, where are you when they're still battling in Congress and the Senate about lynching laws in 2020? God, where? When I, when I was when I was having the privilege of sitting in the room with, 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 with legislators and, and politicians and, and the criminal law enforcement going over the George Floyd bill, and I saw a phrase where it talked about lynching. In 2020, we're still talking about lynching, but that's the America we live in. God, where are you? God, my God, my God. Freedom Truth No. 10. They, those who think they're in charge, they actually think they control your destiny. But God is always in control and their time is quickly running out. That's why I'd be there fighting so hard to make America great again. Because the clock is Your time is running out. Jump down to Exodus verse six, chapter six, we get ready to close. Exodus chapter six, I think on my third close, we're officially about to preach again. <laughs> Exodus chapter six. Turn your Bible, Exodus chapter six, and I want you to read it entirely at home, but I gotta read this because it's not my word, it's God's word. Then the Lord said to Moses, now you will see what I will do to Pharaoh. God says you will now see what I would do to Pharaoh. Because of my mighty hand, he will let you go. Because of my mighty hand, he will drive them out of his country. God also says to Moses, I am the Lord. I appear to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, as God Almighty. But you, but by my name, the Lord, I did not make myself fully known to them. God said, but now I'm getting ready to move like I've never moved before. Verse 4, I also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Cana, where they reside as foreigners. We are foreigners in this land, but God is still a God Almighty. Moreover, I have heard the groan of the Israelites, whom the Egyptians are enslaving, and I have remembered my covenant. Verse 6, Therefore said to the Israelites, I am the Lord. I will bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. I will free you from being slaves to them. Somebody will be shouting right there. I will free you from being slaves to them. I will redeem you with outstretched arm and with mighty acts of judgment. I will take you as my own people. I will be your God and you will know that I am the Lord your God who brought you from under the oak of the Egyptians, I will bring you to the land I swore with uplifted hand to give Abraham the eyes of Jacob. I will give it to you as a possession. I am the Lord. Freedom, truth number 11, as we close, close for real. We're on our way out of this. It is now the time of the Lord's favor, and our freedom is non negotiable. So, my final word. Stop negotiating your freedom. The oppressor is not going to freely give you your freedom. So why do you keep running to the oppressor to release you when you being oppressed is profitable to him? This month I'm going to talk to you about this, this, this situation where this girl was a soothsayer, fortune teller. She was oppressed. And the oppressor got mad when she got set free. Because the oppressor saw his money going out the door. And they even want to arrest Paul for setting her free. But the reality of it is, the young woman was being human trafficking. And the traffickers didn't get arrested. Because America was concerned about the profit, not the people. So if you're watching this message, 
church. And he's still here. God has not forgotten you. God has not turned his back on you. And God established his church until the gates of hell would not prevail. We're now in a year of 2020. With six more months to go, we're halfway finished. And if you walk by faith, not by sight, you get ready to see the year of the Lord's favor. And the enemy's time, the oppressor's time, is winding down and ticking. The question now is what side of history will you be on? Wow. The side of truth? Or you keep living a lie? It's time to be set free. If you're watching this, and you want this crazy preaching, crazy on faith, hooked on faith, willing to live and die on faith, and you want this to be your place, you just inbox on your Texas right now, you read say, I want that Greenhouse International Church to be my church, where I hear God's truth, and the truth will set me free. You tell us right now, you want to be a party, we will hook you up with our new members orientation, you on the right path where until we open back up again fully you can join right now if you're out to pray with you or for you you inbox your prayer request and you text your prayer request right now and we will spend the rest of this day praying with you we're never abandoning God's people so listen it's your opportunity now to respond share this message all week share it over and over again watch it I said a lot real fast watch it over and over again yourself and share it over and over again. And they continue to sow financial seeds into this ministry. We'll trust the God for 200 of you to sow a seed of $100 in a green envelope to build the note. We'll trust the God for 1,000 of you to sow a seed of at least $20 for the ongoing work of the ministry. I pray you've been blessed by the day's experience. I pray your life has been changed and your time has not been wasted. We're going to bring Pastor Sandra back up now. She's going to pray the final prayer, and then we're going to be out. We want to invite you to come on today. If there may be a prayer request, we want you to put it down, amen, in the notes. Because we definitely want to pray for you here at the Greenhouse International Church. We want to pray with you on today. If there's a, a special prayer request, we're asking you to put it down in the notes, or you can inbox us right now in the name of Jesus. And we want you to know that no longer bound, no more chains hold in me. How many of you feel that way on today? Somebody ought to say, fact that. I'm free. Come on, somebody ought to fact that right now. Come on, I'm no longer bound. No more chains hold in me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, I'm free. Father God, we come right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, you for your freedom. Thank you, you for freeing us. Lord, we thank you that you allowed Jesus to die so that we could no longer be bound. Oh, God, we thank you for this mighty word that went forth on today. God, we pray on today that the people of God will receive your word, that they will back. Oh, yes, that you allow Jesus to die so that they can get up and live again. Oh, God, we pray right now that America heard the facts and that America will come back and worship you in spirit and in truth. Oh, God, we just want to tell you thank you for loving us. Oh, the devil can back that. We thank you for sacrificing your life, Jesus. Every backfire. Oh, back home this morning. You can back that. Because he loves you. He can serve about you. He cares about you. In the mighty name of Jesus. God, if we can do Jesus. Oh God, we thank you for being concerned about us. We thank you this morning for loving us. We thank you that even though we're in the middle of this storm, you're still concerned about us. You still care about us. And God, we want to end this day saying thank you. Thank you, Lord. 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 
down for a while. We wrote back in June. Now we're going back again to full online services. The coronavirus is skyrocketing. We got to be safe and smart and wise. But listen, I'm giving you a appeal now. Throughout this pandemic, you've seen, you've heard all around the place, the Greenhouse International Church at 200 West Greens Road. Even though the church service is shut down, the work vision, the mission continues to go stronger than before. In May, 5,200 families were fed. June, we blessed more families. Then the numbers were close to 6,000, plus two COVID-19 free testing here at 200 West Greens Road. We will kick it right back off in July, but I'm appealing to you, listen. People are not coming to the church, but the bills are still coming to the church. I'm telling you today, Greenhouse members, partners, friends, and those who see the work will challenge 200 of you to a special seed of $100 for the building note. Yes, 200 of you with trust in God will sow in the month of July beginning right now a special green envelope seed for the building note. 200 of you with 100. It will actually 1,000 generous givers. 1,000 generous givers to sow a seed this month of at least $20 so we can continue to do the work of the Lord. We're going to come through this with some audience. We're going to keep serving God's people. I need 1,000 of my partners and friends to join me in sowing a seed of at least $20 this month. 200 of you can stretch yourself in a green envelope to fill that note of $100. We can do this together. We're better. Together we're stronger. At the end of the day, we are the hands, the feet, the mouth, and the arms of Jesus. Let's come together and let's win. 